We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Nazem Kadri. We'll start with Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Hey, Naz. Um, I guess to start, just how much of a, a weight off your shoulders is that goal and, and how exciting was, was that moment for you? Oh, man, it felt good. It felt good for sure. Uh, just, you know, the time of the game. You know, obviously we needed a goal. Um, you know, the guys uh, on the team just kept encouraging me to, to shoot it and, you know, finally, uh, finally one went in. Lauren Jabari, Altitude Sports. Now, I was looking at this one. I mean, obviously, maybe not the best second period for you guys, but you came out and really, you know, got a character win. Um, what was said between two and three? And, and what did you like about your team's response there in the third and then in overtime? Yeah, not, not much was said. I think, uh, you know, the guys in the dressing room, you know, do a pretty good job communicating with each other and just know what we got to do. So at the end of the day, it uh, definitely wasn't our best game. But, uh, you know, certainly a character win, just being able to, uh, you know, overcome a two-goal deficit in the third period, get one late, cash in an OT. So, uh, you know, def definitely a, a pesky win for us. Arif Dean, Mile High Sports. Naz, I know this is kind of looking ahead, but you guys have an opportunity on Wednesday to sweep a team playing them four times in a row, which, you know, already doesn't happen much in the regular season, but especially now so considering you're playing them twice on the road. Just your thoughts about that and, and what that could mean for your team moving forward. I mean, it'd be huge. Obviously, it'd be ideal. Um, you know, four games against the same team in this league. I don't care where you are in the standings. It's always going to be tough. Um, you know, teams and players in this league have a lot of pride and, uh, you know, they don't like to lose. So, you know, they came out hard today. Um, kudos to them. They played a great game. But, um, you know, we are able just to find a way. And that's what good teams do. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Naz, I think you got goals tonight from three different lines. Just how dangerous or how much more dangerous is this team when you're you're getting production from those middle six players scoring wise? For sure. I mean, that's that's been the storyline the last couple of years is uh, improving our depth and, you know, having a, a full team top to bottom. So I think, uh, you know, obviously that that consistency and some puck luck is going to change throughout the course of the, the, the year. You know, sometimes the puck seems like it's following you and sometimes it feels like uh, it's never around you. So. You know, it's just about managing and, and uh, finding a balance. But, you know, when we have everyone going like, uh, you know, like we, we contributed tonight, we're a tough team to stop. All right. Thank you, Naz. All right. Thanks. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche forward Andre Burakovsky. Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Um, Andre, can you just take us through your view of, of that last play and, and kind of if you were able, were you even able to see the puck go in? It kind of trickled in pretty slowly. Uh, yeah, I mean, Miku changed. And I come on the ice and Kale gave me the puck and I'm not sure what happened, but I, f I found a lot of room in, in the middle of the ice. Uh, I don't know if they were changing or what they were doing, but I found some ice and I mean, uh, I felt like Burns was standing pretty low uh, so it's just trying to get a shot off like in between him or through him and uh, I kind of saw that the puck kind of ended up behind the goalie but I didn't know it was it was going in I saw that uh, when uh, when I was level level with the goal line basically so um, yeah definitely nice to see it go in though. Go back to Peter Ba. Yeah and I also just wanted to ask what it was like as a teammate to see Kadri kind of he was in a bit of a slump, break that and score such an important goal late. Yeah, I mean, it was huge. I mean, he's uh, he's uh, definitely a big player for us, a player that we really need and rely on a lot. So um, just be able to see him and get it going and get a, such a big goal for us when um, he's been having a little bit of unlock lately and the puck haven't really got in for him. So it was really nice to see it going for him. And I was, I was pumped for him for sure. Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, with such a long road stretch, how important was it to, you know, come back and, and get this first one to, to kind of, you know, start this road, road stretch strong and also, you know, after dropping the last three road games, just get it going here on the road? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was a really big one. I mean, at the end here, um, we want to we wanna be first place in the league and I think this was a must win for us. We, we talked about it. We need to come out harder. We need to leave everything we have on the ice. Um, in third period, um, even though we're down, there was like there was no doubt we we we're just gonna find a way to get this done, and and we did. So 
a great job from everyone in the room. Um, um, yeah, just sticking with it. It was it was fun to play and it was fun to watch. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Yeah, Berkey, the overtime shot was the first credited, but uh, it seemed like you made the play of the game early there in the third period. I don't know why that wasn't your goal, but if you could talk about that play, I mean, obviously it got you guys within 3-2. It was a huge goal. Yeah, uh, no, I got the puck from Gravy, and then uh, I think the whole game I was going up towards the blue line, trying to find D two on the other side. So I, I just trying to mix it up. I found I found some some room in the middle. I think Josty made made a good good screen there, took away their guy, and um, yeah, gave me kind of the ice to walk in and shoot. And I, I couldn't see if it what happened there. Uh, first first I thought it went in through through his arm. And then the puck just uh, was laying on the side behind him, basically. And uh, uh, yeah, I whacked on um, on uh, Nishushkin's stick, and yeah, he got it. So uh, I was a little late on that, but uh, nice to see him get the goal as well, and 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 uh, got us going. We'll take two more here for Andre Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Andre, is there a little bit of a cause for concern in the locker room, knowing that? it seems like every time the team gets off the COVID protocol list, another player jumps on that and it kind of feels like, here we go again. Do you guys ever think about that with Dubnik going on COVID today? No, not at all. I mean, we have such a depth in, in our team. Uh, I think Joe has been doing an amazing job putting this team together. And and uh, I feel like every time we've been having someone sitting out, someone else been stepping up and been playing really well for us. So um, no, we, we're not worried about that. Like we, we, we're going to have to keep our focus on what we can control. We can't control if, if someone gets sick or, or injured or whatever, like we, we, we have to just stick, stick with it and go through whatever, whatever battle we have to go through. Um, and it's the end of year playoff is coming around. So, I mean, we, whatever happens, you, you got to get out there and, and leave everything you have on the ice, um, no matter what. Last one here, Peter Baugh, the athletic. Yeah, and Andre, I guess what what kind of went wrong for you guys in the second period and what specific adjustments did you guys look to make going into the third? I know you said you were pretty confident. Uh, I don't know what went wrong. I mean, we we turned off we turned the puck over um a couple times that um they were capitalizing on. Um I mean, those those goals, I think they're they're on us. And uh, we got to do a better job and and um uh, take care of the puck a little bit better. Um I mean, play is going to happen. Puck is going to bounce um, wrong direction or whatever. It's going to take a bad jump on us. But um, that's that's when it's important that we, we just bounce back, just like we did today. Um, the adjustments for, for the game, and we just we just said, said that we need we need control the puck better. We need to handle it better and put it deep. That's where we're really good. When we play in their zone and having long shift, we, they're getting tired, and we we capitalize on some of the, some of them. So. Um, I think that was that was just kind of a game plan. Just get it down there, quick ups through the neutral zone, and and play with speed, get going. So um, yeah, I think we definitely did that in third, and and uh, um, we're I think we're wearing them down a little bit there. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Andre. Thank you. All right. We'll take questions for Avalanche head coach Jared Bednar, Lauren Jabara, Altitude Sports. Hey, Jared, you found a way to get this one done tonight after maybe, you know, not the best second period. Just what what did you say between the second and third there in terms of adjustments that you want to see being made? And and then what did you think about the response there in the third to get it done in an overtime as well? Yeah, well, I loved I loved our response in the third period. I mean, just a heightened sense of uh, urgency and a little bit of desperation in our game. Um, I to like I thought our first period was pretty good. Um we had a couple turnovers early in the period and we weren't skating out of the D zone. We were looking to make plays and passes through the middle of the ice and, and they picked off a couple pucks and we addressed it on the bench, you know, five minutes into the first period. And then we started to go, um, but we missed the net a lot on our opportunities. I would say um, our puck management just was not, was not good until the third period. We, we, um, when we had scoring chances, we missed the net on, on probably our five or six best scoring chances through 30 minutes. Um, started the second period, we had 
Um, clicking through the scoring chances against, we had six turnovers for six scoring chances against, and we gave up two goals. and And some of those were in the in the D zone, some of them were in the neutral zone, and some of them were in the offensive zone, just getting a little too fancy and not recognizing where the pressure was coming from. So we didn't manage the puck well, and it put us in a hole. and um, my belief was we were there to work and skate that we needed to turn up that that competitiveness a little bit and and we had to be way better with the puck and, and the guys responded they they knew how big of a game it was for us because um, we had saw that um, Minnesota had, had come back to win in regulation um, so fighting to stay ahead of them also pulling in within two points of Vegas if we won um, so the guys were, were fired up for the third period to get out there and we, we believed we could get the job done. The fourth goal kind of took a little bit of wind out of our sails, but we answered right back to make it four, three and, um, you know, had, a, had a real strong third and finish to that game. So, uh, kudos to our guys for being able to, to get the job done after not playing a full 60 minutes. And for a guy like Nazem Kadri, who you said has been doing the right things, just been a little snake bit and how good was it to see him get that one to tie it up and, and put it into overtime, kind of get that monkey off of his back. Well, I, I mean, yeah, it's huge. It's, it's huge for our team to get that goal, obviously a big goal. And, and for Naz um, personally, because he's, he, you know, like I think he's been, he's been working hard or he's been paying attention to his checking game, uh, doing the right things and trying to manage the puck properly. And he just hasn't had any luck with pucks going in and, and his, his scoring chances are starting. He's, he's getting more part of our offense here just recently and, and still not going in for him. So to be able to get a goal uh, like that, hopefully sparks him. I, I thought he, he competed hard and, and again, did the right things was working hard in the faceoff circle. So he, a lot of positives to his game and um, no bigger goal than that one to sort of break out of the slump. So hopefully, hopefully you can get some confidence out of that. Um, you know that without that goal that we're in trouble so um hopefully like i said he can sort of carry that over in the next game here mike chambers denver post jared burakowski uh was only credited with a single shot obviously the ot one but uh you know he made that great play early in the third period it seemed like those those two plays kind of turned the tide would you agree yeah, yeah i agree i think you know once we lost Miko uh, to the COVID protocol and, and we put Berkey with Mac and, and Landy, he, he had a couple exceptional games in, in um, St. Louis and, and really he's kind of, he had an off game in Vegas. Uh, and then after that game, he's just back and, and, and skating and, and being aggressive and charging pucks into scoring areas. And I mean, he, he may, makes those two plays tonight huge difference maker in our game. I love the way he's skated though and competed on pucks and, 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 you know, like I said, getting the puck into the interior of the ice by using his legs. And when he gets the opportunity to, to take his shots, he's been taking them, uh, scored a big goal for us last game off the face off gets another one tonight in overtime. And so I'm, I'm really happy with the way he's playing right now. And I, th I think part of that is just getting a little confidence back in his game. He's been a streaky guy um, he, uh, for most of the year. And when he gets hot and he rides that confidence, it's, it's, uh, it's impressive. And, and he's been doing a nice job for us. Hopefully he can continue with that. And I think part of the, part of getting him sparked was putting him with Mac and Landy when Mika was out and he gets excited to play, he gets rewarded um, a couple times playing with them. And he's just been, been able to keep it going. Peter Bog, the athletic. Hey Jared, it, um, it looked like you were rolling with JT Comfer a little bit more than some of the other guys on the fourth line. Is there anything you've been seeing from his game lately that's, that's built more trust in you that led you to have him out there a little more? Well, I just, I liked the way he skated. I thought he was making some plays and, you know, that, that's just me coaching um, gut feeling, you know, I think like even in the third period, I flipped uh, Burakovsky back with uh, Kadri and Donskoy, um, moved Joe, moved Comfort on, you know, with Val and, and Josty a few times and 
Um, you know, so I, I just coach him by gut there. Like I'm trying to get, we're, we're trailing. So Belmar and Sherwood didn't see a lot of ice. Uh, Carl didn't see a lot of ice. I'm just going with guys that I felt like were really tenacious on the puck and that might be able to make a play for us to get us back in the game. And, um, those are the guys I went with, you know, and, and, and occasionally I, I get him out there too, because he's a right shot center and he can take draws if we get in trouble. Um, I like to have a, a lefty and a righty out there that can both take draws if, if we need them in the, in the offensive zone as well. So we, we were riding McKinnon, um, his line, and, and Taves and McCarr a lot in the third because every time they got out there, they were making something happen. And we we know that it was a big game for us and we needed to win it. And um, so, so those guys saw quite a bit of uh, work in the third period, but that's just me coaching with my gut. I'll take three more here for Jared. Eric Dean, Mile High Sports. Jared, I wanted to ask you about two players. Uh, for starters, Philip Grubauer. I know a lot of those goals were uh, turnovers, especially in the second. Uh, but just your overall thoughts on his game. And number two, Nathan McKinnon didn't score today, but another nine-shot performance. Just you know, a comment on his game as well, please. Well, I mean that that group was exceptional. Um, McKinnon's line, and they get they they made a bad read on the rush coverage coming out of the offensive zone for the fourth goal. Besides that, they defended hard. I mean, they were they were on the attack the whole night, and especially in the third period. I mean, I don't know that they spent more than thirty seconds in their zone the whole period and um, playing a lot. So I I love their game, and and Gruby was I thought Gruby was was pretty good too. You know, I he. He made some big saves for us. Um, the second period, he had a lot of work. Like we just, we just weren't sharp with all those turnovers. And the toughest saves that you got to make is, is, you know, when a team creates scoring chances and you're in D zone coverage or you're in your rush coverage, Gruby understands our system and he knows where the breakdowns may come from and where the scoring, if, if, if we have a breakdown that this is the shot he's probably going to face. And, and when we're predictable like that and, and we're playing with our system, if they beat us someplace, he knows where that breakdown is going to happen and he can see it happening and read the play and, and know where the shooter's going to, which shooter is going to be open. So he, he tends to make all those saves the toughest ones to 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 make are are when you're turning the puck over because it's just random events so you don't manage the puck properly and a d-man throws it on someone's tape it's it, you know it's happening quick and it's it's unpredictable so um those those goals tend to or those turnovers tend to cost you um and, and the ones he gave up tonight i mean it, you know, the cane, we turn it over in the offensive zone. We give up a breakaway, makes a nice move, you know, like plays like that. Um, you know, your, your chances of making those saves all the time aren't good, but he, he came up with enough to get us the win tonight. So I'm happy with his performance. It's definitely not on him. The, the hole that we were in definitely wasn't on him. Mike Chambers, Denver Post. Jared, uh, Devin Dubnik landed on the COVID list. Did he test positive or is he in contact tracing? Any idea how long he's going to be out? And is he still with the team in San Jose? Yeah, so he tested positive. Um, so he's out two weeks. And um, he's not with – he's in San Jose, but he has a place here from before the trade still. Um, so he's just going back there to do his quarantine. Um, he's there now. And, um, you know, at the end of his uh, time served, he'll, uh, he'll make his way back to Denver and drive there. Last one here, Peter Baugh, The Athletic. Yeah, Jared, and another logistical question with that. Will you guys have to find a way to get a third goalie out here? Because aren't you, are you required to carry three goalies at this point? Yes, we will. Um, I think Joe and Chris were working on that uh, um, during the game while we were um, while we were playing. So I haven't heard exactly who it is or, or when they're coming, um, but I, I, be I believe that that whoever it is will have to drive because you can't not supposed to fly commercial. So uh, travel arrangements are being made, and um, I can probably update you on that tomorrow or the next day. All right. Thank you, Jared. All right. Thank you.